What happens when you get into debt? Get out now. Come back with a police officer. You calm down. And you can't. I haven't got any money. Or won't pay it back. Get off on my property. In this series, we meet the people who are losing their homes. Hello, would you like to open the door? I've got 24 hours. Find somewhere else to go. Their cars. Can you pay this yes or no? I can't go with me now. I'm no going to take your cars. And their possessions. I can't afford to pay the rent, but £700 telly. <sighs> we meet the people who are owed money. Just got taken advantage of, big time. And the people whose job it is to collect it. I don't want to touch that. Don't panic. Because when you can't pay, they'll take it away. I will start unplugging and uh, get things wrapped up for transportation. You pay me, and then I'll stop. According to the Ministry of Justice, the number of tenants at risk of eviction is now higher than at any other time in the last decade. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are High Court enforcement agents and they're on their way to their next job. Along with their team, they're busier than ever before. Is there anybody in? Chasing debts. £40,000. And debtors. Hello? Under the authority of the High Court, they can seize possessions and repossess homes. We're High Court enforcement officers and we come to repossess the property. Today, they're in Docklands, East London, to carry out an eviction. The tenants haven't paid rent for the last seven months, so the team have the authority to seize goods to cover the £8,500 rent arrears. Always in the back of your mind, when you walk up to somebody's front door, you never know what's behind it. You might see a spy hole in the door so they can see you, so they know what's there. Could be a nice little old lady, could be a man standing there with a shotgun. So you have to be really, really careful. The team are able to enter the flat with the front door key. Hello? <clears throat> Hello? The laptop. Oh, in there. With no one at home, it looks like it could be a smooth repossession. It's just a matter of changing the locks. What does it get, really? Paul and Steve now turn their attention to the household goods they can seize to cover the outstanding rent. There's shoes and bits and bods. The yeah. so wardrobe's full of clothes. It's all good quality clothes, isn't it? Armani. We've got another door here. Well, that one's locked. So do you have a key for that one? No, that one's new. Well, we have a locksmith. So is all this yours? This is all mine. Except the laptop and the, the TV as well. This stuff isn't mine. <laughs> the flat's in better repair than I expected, because I was assuming the worst. I'm a bit surprised by that lock on the door. It's clear the laptops and TV won't cover the £8,500 rent arrears. But there may be more valuables behind the locked door. Yeah. So the locksmith gets to work. Once in, the search continues. I reckon that is. Is it heavy? Yeah. Very heavy. The curious case. Give a star. Right. 
I don't want to touch that. I think you better call the old Bill. Don't panic. Then they just call the police. Yeah. There must be a million dollars there. The discovery changes everything. I know this is an obvious thing to say, but it is obviously a crime scene. Don't touch anything fingerprint-wise. Uh, yeah, I wonder if you can. I'm High Court Enforcement. I've just gained access to a property, and within the property is a box full of dollar bills. I'd be grateful if someone could get here a bit lively. I don't understand what the white powder is, though. I would say there was $8.5 million there of mixed denomination. Is that what it said? What? Yeah. Do not expose parked note to the light. Observe the presence of concentrated acting powder for good colour separation. Eight and a half million dollars. Will the police come in quickly or just take Well, I did time? say to him, I said, I'd rather you came a bit lively. The team have been stopped in their tracks. All Paul and Steve can do is hope the police arrive quickly, in case the owner of the eight and a half million dollars turns up. But ten minutes later, the lift bell sounds. Hi there. Uh, just to let you know, we're High Court Enforcement and we've repossessed the property today. And everything yeah, in it. I'm not the main tenant. I'm just a student. OK. So. Well, what I'm going to say to you is now that you're not allowed into the property at all. If you want to take that up with us, you can talk to the police. Can I be allowed to no. get my books and all? Nothing at all just yet. I need to call him. I need to let him know. All this. By all means, let him know. Give him a call. Yeah. Can you just Hello. keep an eye on the entrance? Yes. Uh, um, the tenant's just come back, so you've got an issue now, so I'll call you back later. Can you tell more too, Can you ring the office, see where they are? Please, please. I'd like someone here sooner rather than later. The circumstances have changed. Uh, the tenants have arrived back, and we need your boys here. They've taken over the, um, the apartment. Unsure if he's connected to the money, and with the flat now a crime scene, Paul and Steve need to detain the man any way they can. I'm a student. I need to, you want to see my ID and all that? I need to go to school today. Can I so what is going to stop that? Can I stop you there? You're not going to school today. You're going nowhere. You're effectively under arrest as of now. No phone calls either. Paul is an ex-CID officer. His police training kicks in. <clears throat> He's got another one. The man is starting to get anxious. Paul and Steve have no idea who else might turn up or what the man might do next. And there's no sign of the police. Good morning. 40 minutes after the original phone call, the police finally turn up. Game possession, room's empty. This one was extra locked. Parcel in the suitcase, opened it. Yeah. That's it. These are his phones. Okay. His colleague, he's desperately trying to call him. Probably made about 30 calls in yeah. the last two. No issues. Minutes. Are you holding on to that? Yeah. yeah. Right, no issues. Just keep your hands out your pocket for the time being, okay? Um, What's the score of all that cash in there, mate? What? What's the score of all the money in that box? That is not my room. If you're out there, it's locked, then okay. You're something you don't know anything about. Yeah. That is your premises, yeah. Yeah, but I don't, I don't get in this room, really. I don't, I don't get that. The man claims the locked bedroom belongs to another tenant, and he knows nothing about the money. It's a crime scene now, mate. If uh, we could just uh, move back for us out the front, front door. We're out the flat, so it's now their property, as such. And the police have now thrown us out, and there'll be lots of other people coming down as well. So, uh... 
The man is arrested and the police have a new case. But Paul and Steve still haven't recovered the eight and a half thousand pound debt. The chances of recovering the money in my inexperienced view, yeah, waste of time. In the UK, small businesses are owed billions of pounds in late payments. Three quarters of small firms say they have no procedure in place to chase slow paying customers. Brian O'Shaughnessy and Graham Aldred are High Court enforcement agents. They've been working together for six years, repossessing properties. My guy's downstairs, Graham. He'll come up and sit down and talk to you and explain what's going on. Chasing rent arrears. Uh, I need it paying today. <laughs> and collecting payment on debt. We're not going to take anything because you're going to pay it. Today, they're on a highly unusual job. They have a high court writ against a famous football club. It commands them to collect money owed or seize goods to cover the debt. Uh, How much is it for? This moment in time, £23,854.52. Wow, what did I have any money for then? Seating, it looks like it's for seating. British football has become a lucrative multi million pound game. But for many smaller clubs, these are hard times. This club currently play in League One. It was reported last year that they narrowly avoided administration, with unsecured debts running to millions of pounds. Let's get in here and see what's going on. Hello. I need to speak to someone who deals with your accounts. On the commercial premises, we have the power to enter anywhere. But if the doors are open, we'll try and get in as far as we can. Obviously, that gives us a bit more power while we're in there. <sighs> can I make our position clear on this today? We're here today mm -hmm. to either collect money or remove goods from the property to towards right, the cover okay. the debt. OK, no, so if you could get your accountant, it's not a problem. Right, OK. But can I ask you to go on the other side no. of the door? No. Right, OK. OK, no problem. <clears throat> if you have a look through that window, you'll see him going to another office. See, see if you can see anyone. Players' lounge. They've so been lunch, quite yeah. evasive here at the moment, uh, which is it's unusual for the size of an establishment it is. Now, they've already set the boundaries with trying to shut us out and shut the door, so we're just going to carry on now and, and see what happens. So I don't know if you want to just walk upstairs and see what's up there. doing with big corporate companies you'll find that most of the time you'll speak to four or five people before speaking to the person that you actually need to speak to any news no nope, nothing at all after nearly 20 minutes yeah, there's nobody in there. Okay, thank you they spot an open door That one's locked as well, Brian. Oh, there we go. Oh! Here we go. Hello. 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 Okay, that's fine. Sorry. What we're going to do now, if you want to advise your accounts. Excuse me? He's just on the phone, so Okay, I'm going to call an officer now to get into. Would you like to talk to us? If you'd like to stay and wait in reception. Oh. I'll wait here, it's fine, thank you. Um, I'm not. Stay and wait in reception? No, I won't wait in reception, no. With the attitude that I've been met with so far, I'm going to wait here. Well, there's been nobody here to deal with you. That's there has there's been plenty of people here to there's deal with me. Authority OK. Here so in 15 minutes' time, I'm going to escalate to removal. We're going to be a bit, bit, bit firmer here. Well, we're not happy with the way they're behaving, um, and that will reflect on the action we take today as well. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the removal vehicles en route because I'm not going to sit here all day. OK? Yes, sir. no, yes, I can. That's what I'm here for. I suggest you speak to your legal department now. Brian, just get the vehicles ordered. Let's get yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm going to get some other guys down here. 
Finally, after nearly an hour, a senior figure from the club appears. Afternoon, guys. Hello, sir. How are you? How are you doing? Thanks for coming down. Sorry, right, I'm on my way to Portugal for some oh, conference. You'd like to come with yeah, me? Fantastic. Thank Thank you. Here we go. A club official has been forced to turn back from a journey to the airport. He has just 45 minutes to resolve the issue before he leaves for his flight. First bit of hospitality we've seen today so far. <laughs> and we understand it, well, you know, it's, it's, it's understandable. Oh. I've only got a brief bit of what's happened, but it's a bit of a conflict. It's fine, it's fine. We'll no. spend everything. Um, we'll hear your side, it's not a problem. Yeah. He blames the non-payment on a disputed takeover bid. There's a ownership now between the current chairman and the past chairman. OK. As to who owns the club. Yeah. The simple thing is, you know, the club doesn't have the money in the bank. That's fair enough, we respect Yeah, that. I so appreciate probably, that. I mean, I'll lay it on the line to you. If we can't satisfy this high court writ today, we're ordered to seize goods on the property. I'm not interested in politics. If they've got internal politics, it's entirely up to them. I just want to satisfy the writ outstanding. That's, that's my politics. Well, I've got contractors being con contacted at the moment. I don't want to go down that route. If we don't get this satisfied, we will go down that route today, mm. yeah? But I don't want it to go down that route today. Um, I would rather you speak to somebody and try and get it resolved the right way. Whatever's going to happen will happen today. <clears throat> Nine million Britons are considered to be in serious debt, and it's not just affecting their finances. Almost half say it's harming their health. Biggin Hill, Kent. Enforcement agent Paul Bowhill is with Ben Pinner and other colleagues. They have a writ to repossess a property from a couple who haven't paid their landlord any rent for the last seven months. Um, there's no children involved, to my knowledge. There is about £7,000 worth of unpaid rent. Right. But the team aren't here to collect the couple's debt. They're here to evict them. Come here, stay here. No reply. Ben makes enquiries with a neighbour. All right, thank you very much anyway. Take care. Do you remember before we got it on our way here, I said, there's meant to be no kids connected or anything? Yeah. There's six. The team look for another way into the house. They can't be living like that, surely to God. No one seems to be home. The writ of possession allows the team to break in and change the locks. Would you look at that? Oh. You're out of law. Oh, lovely. <laughs> This is wrong. They can live in here. That's horrible. That's hard. They can live in squalor. It just intrigues me. Brand new 50 inch upstairs, smart LED HD TV. Another Same. one here. Xbox. Xboxes. Loads of, loads of games. A Mac laptop. Okay, let's start getting these up. We've got lots of locks to change. <laughs> The enforcement team now have full possession of the property. And for the family, it's no longer home. Just as the last lock is changed, the mum of six arrives. The property is being repossessed. For? Unpaid rent. Well, I have proof to state otherwise. Well, I'm afraid we have a court order that says we need to repossess it. Oh, OK, so now what? What you need to do is you need to get some stuff now. I understand. Now, hold on. Hold on, look, I'm gonna give you the bad news first. Mm -hmm. I understand you have six kids. Mm -hmm. you, we're gonna give you this, a copy of the writ. You need okay. to take it to the council. Mm -hmm. They should emergency accommodate you. Okay. Because effectively now, you are homeless. Okay. Do you wanna go in and get some stuff? Have you got a caseworker at the council or anything? I have a social worker. I haven't got no call or nothing. Okay, look. The mother is adamant she has paid the rent. I have got proof 
here that I've been paying my rent and I've given her cash. Where's the proof that you've paid it? When she moved in there, I gave her £200 for the keys. Yeah. And she comes down a weekend after that, I give her £400 cash. Yeah, but OK, you've just accounted for £600. What about the other £8,400? How much is the rent a month? £1,400. Well, 12 1200 mm. Have you paid anything since Christmas? Um, no. OK. Well, that's what it is, then. This what rent is obviously counts because you haven't paid it since Christmas. No. So I'm sorry to say that this does stand. It's hard sometimes when we're throwing families with kids out onto the street um, for non-payment of rent. Sometimes we'll liaise with the council, let them know what's going on. We'll do our best to help them where we can. They've got a duty to look after you and your kids. They do. Pack some stuff for now. Get yourself down the council. I will give you my number. When you get down there, get them to ring me. I'll speak to them. If you've got someone you can ring now, I'll speak to them now. She calls the council. Hello. The social worker is aware of the situation. You said intentionally homeless. How have you come to that conclusion? No disrespect for you, but as far as I'm concerned, I think you guys not having a duty care towards six children. The council claim she's made herself intentionally homeless and say they have no duty to help, which gives the enforcement team a moral dilemma. The council are saying they're not going to house her. Why? She made herself intentionally homeless by not paying the rent. Cool. Yeah, really what are the social services say? Social services will have a different view on it. Ben calls them to see if they can help. I did speak to someone in the housing department. All right. And they were not very cooperative and said that you would have to deal with it. They weren't going to deal with it. I want to give it them. I know. If you guys could sort some, I don't know, temporary com emergency accommodation out. Yeah, um, do you want to put back on the phone for Yeah, me? of course. Thank you for informing me of everything, Ben. Um, um, like I said, thanks very much. Thank you. I can't believe the situation. The housing department say they're not going to rehouse, well, that's okay, behind on the rent. But then the social services are saying, well, you'll have to speak to the housing department. So if you look at the hypothesis, this lady's going to be on her arse in the street with six kids any time now. The agents are required to enforce the writ. Ben urges her to go to the council in person to plead her case. The hardened truth of it mm. is that you there in person with your children mm. is a better defence than you on the end of a phone. Yeah. Because you're in there, you're their problem straight away. Mm. Have you started to pack anything yet? No. Can you? Yeah. Thank you. Don't need to take the whole world. Clothes, medication, you know. It becomes very, very uh, emotional. And yes, these situations do affect me, but the writ specifies what you are instructed to do. Once we've shut that door and this family's gone down to the council, we don't know if this single mum and six kids are going to be sleeping somewhere dry tonight or they'll be sleeping on the streets. It's taken the enforcement team four hours, but the house is now off limits and the mother and her family are homeless. If she isn't given emergency shelter at the council, she and her children will have nowhere to go. One hour ago, Brian and Graham arrived at a football club, chasing a debt of 24,000 pounds. Like to just go and wait in reception. I'll wait till it's fine, thank you. Um, uh, no, no, I won't wait till reception, no. After a search to find someone in charge... I'm going to get the removal vehicles en route, because I'm not going to sit here all day. ..they eventually got the attention of a club official. Hello, sir, how are you? How are you doing? 
and laid out their proposition in no uncertain terms. I'll lay it on the line to you. If we can't satisfy this high court writ today, we're ordered to seize goods on the property. Do me a favour. I don't know who you can speak to. Let, let them know our position here and what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's all I can ask you to do. The club is undergoing an ownership battle, but the official needs to deal with the debt. He has just 45 minutes before he needs to leave for an urgent flight, so he makes a call. So unsensible. Hmm. Nice chat. Yeah. I think they're going to go for their goods. No. No? Nope. The old chairman ain't going to pay it. The new one ain't going to pay it. I'm just going to leave the club in limbo, aren't they? Wow. Well, it looks like it will be cracking on there. It does so. Half an hour later, the club official returns. He now has just 15 minutes to spare before leaving for his flight. Um, I've got 66 in the bank. Brilliant. Right. I've got checks of just over six to go out. Right. So, will your client accept eight? The earliest nine. It's a start, OK? I'm here to work with, like I said. Let me speak to my office. Let me see what the claimant wants me to do as well. With £9,000 offered now, and the rest to follow once the club's ownership issue is resolved, Brian calls the office. Can you speak to the claimant and make sure they're happy with that, please? Yeah? And then I'm happy that they'll satisfy this after that hearing. Yeah? If not, I'll be straight back. Come on. Hello? Mr Simpson. Yes, sir. Uh, good to go, mate. The director's just giving the green light on it. Yeah? Yeah, to go for the nine grand today. Put the arrangement in place. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do it now. I'll call you back. I've got to get him off. Yeah, I'll call you back. No worries. Fine, fine. fine. 20 minutes late for his flight, the club official finally departs. His debt at the end of the day. It could be a large company or a small company. It doesn't matter who it is. The approach is exactly the same. We try and show empathy towards them, but at the end of the day, we're there to do a job. Biggin Hill, Kent. Four days ago, Paul and his team evicted tenants who owed their landlord nearly £10,000. Would you look at that? On arrival, they found a family with six children and a house in a state of neglect. They eventually persuaded the mother to go to the council to appeal for emergency housing. You there, in person, with your children, is a better defence than you on the end of a phone. Today, Paul is back to let the family in to collect their belongings. He's brought his daughter Emma along to help. When Paul last saw the mother, she and her children had nowhere to go. What did the, uh, what did the council do? In the uh, well, I'm happy to come back and catch her, which I don't really want to be in right now. Uh, is that just for how long? Uh, for 28 days. But have they said they will give you accommodation? No, because apparently I made myself intentionally harmless. So how does that help you with the kids, then? Uh, it doesn't really help me. I've got to find my own accommodation, really, haven't I? The entire house needs to be cleared in just three hours, so Emma pitches in. Ready for more bags yet, or...? Uh, no, I've still got loads. You're OK? Yeah. And you're all right on your own? Yeah, 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 yeah. The £300 fee for the enforcement team's visit must be paid before any items are removed. Her partner is supposed to be sorting it out. Have you brought the money with you? Yeah, I have brought the money with me. OK, I'll move it. Please don't get agitated, because we're here well, to help. Well, it's in the way. I'm trying to back in so I can get my gear right. Well, if you pay me, I'll move the van. Well, I'm giving you one and off until I've done the first two trips. No. It's 300 or well, you just I'm lock up. Well, I've got to go to the bank to get I'm just going to lock up. Well, that's all. Go and get it, then. Once I go, go and drop the first lot off, I can go to the bank and get the rest of the money. I haven't got the rest of the like money on me unless I go to the bank. It doesn't work like that. Now you're saying I've got to go all the way back to the bank just to go and get the money now. I can't reach. She's going to be here anyway. We're helping her to pack. We've offered to do that already. I understand. We've supplied the bags. We're perfectly reasonable. And we'll help and carry the bags up the stairs. We'll do everything in our power to make it work. Trust me, I'm the most reasonable man 
you could ever come across. OK. Right, so you go to the bank, you get the money, they will help her pack and start carrying the stuff upstairs. The people seem most surprised that we won't go back for nothing. Bearing in mind, these people have had rent-free accommodation for six months. So they've saved 10 grand, and they're arguing of paying a small sum, really, to get an officer to go back and open the property up and stand waiting while they load the van. Why do they expect something for nothing? Her partner finally returns with some money in cash. Thank you. How much is that? Two thirty. Seven, eight, nine pound seventy. Short pay pounds. It is two hundred and thirty pounds in paper money and all the rest in change, as if that's going to upset the balance. So we just sat there and counted it. With the fee finally paid, the family has less than two hours to finish moving out. But it's slow going. It's half past three. Ideally, we'd be out by five. Simple. How much else has got to go? All of it. It's all got to go out there. Still a washing machine. <sighs> yeah, they've still got a house full of furniture. All they've moved out so far is like the blooming clutter. The three hours is up, but the house is still a mess. So Paul instructs them to move everything into the garden. Well, whatever we can going to have to go back out there. I'm going to have to keep coming back until it's gone. Oh, that's OK. Day, no, no, that's OK. It's not a problem. Do you want any more bags? Um, I've got really big I, bags. I've got really something big... in the back of the van as well. Where have I got me coming? Bus, it's taken four and a half hours. All done. Have you got the keys? Yeah. But the family are finally out of the house. At last, Paul can lock up. With the house emptied, the extent of the property's neglect is clear. My sympathies are entirely with the landlord. The landlord is destitute. She's moved up to Norwich to look after her mother and was relying on the rental income to actually live on. So she's had no income since Christmas. So she's completely flat broke. In a few days' time, Paul will need to give the landlord her keys back. She hasn't seen her house since the tenants moved in, and she's in for a shock. A report by a leading debt charity shows that small business owners and the self-employed have much higher debts than other people. The self-employed face average debts of 18 times their annual income. Brian and Graham are heading to Wembley. What have we got next, mate? We have got a high court rent. Outstanding balance at the moment is 5,256.18. And we're going to one of them storage unit things, I'm sure it is. Right next to Wembley Stadium. First where, yeah, it is literally, oh, literally right, yeah. right next to Wembley Stadium. Welcome. The High Court writ entitles Brian and Graham to enter the business premises and seize goods to the value of the debt. Business storage and personal storage offices to let. But the company named on the writ is based inside a storage facility. It's the first time Brian and Graham have ever had to pursue a debt in such an unusual location. I think this is going to be it. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. Getting in and finding the debtor among the hundreds of units will be no easy task. Hello, sir. How are you? My name's Graham Olsen, High Court Enforcement. The facility manager arrives. He asks to see Brian and Graham's paperwork. And the situation quickly escalates. Have you got a warrant? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. If I take the warrant, I'll scale it no, and send it to a warrant. Not at all. That's fine. Live okay, then we're going. Well, we're going, Carissa. You, you, well, you, you need to stop us then. You need to get the police. You get the police. You want to do the right way or the wrong way? I'm doing it right. Right, that's fine. I can't show you a copy of the warrant. Right. Yeah. I can't, I can't you a copy of the warrant. Right. 
I'm telling you now. I'm telling The way yeah. it is, yeah. is we have to show the warrant okay. to our legal department, then they will give you, us the go-ahead. You are not the person on the warrant as well. There's the warrant. That, that's fine. They can't resolve the situation. Brian calls the police. Please, please. Hello, my, my name is Brian O'Shaughnessy. I'm a high court enforcement agent. I fear it might be a breach of the peace down here. Of course, I'm the last person anybody wants to see. Who would want me on their front doorstep? Nobody. I wouldn't want me on my front doorstep. Um, but unfortunately, we have to do it. You know, we're empowered to do it. I will work on the court writ, and I will go and do my job lawfully. Within minutes, three squad cars arrive on the scene and a dog handling unit. Hello. Good How are you? How are we doing, you guys? We, we, we've been asked to come here with a writ. They're saying we can't come in. This writ allows us to do so. It's self-explanatory. Right. I'm not so, going to let anybody on site until so, I've got clarification from okay. my company. Despite the police presence, there is still deadlock. Graham has a plan. What we'll do then, in five minutes' time, we'll go through and then we'll, we'll look through our ourselves and make our own inquiries, OK? Can't yes, I can. I can. I can go. I can go in to determine where they are. They have a five thousand pounds writ and police backup, but will Brian and Graham be able to resolve this standoff? We're going to have a look around inside now. We've established the authority we're working under. Come to an agreement that we're going to go and have a look around. Now all they have to do is find the lockup where the debtor's company is situated. What number do you want? That's five, five two. two. Five, right. Please. <laughs> Hello, sir. What company is this? OK, thank you, sir. Hang on, there's offices up here, mate. Yeah, yeah. Ryan! You got it? Yeah. Took us a while. <laughs> they found the debtor's premises. This is the unit. They've obviously got an office here as well, but this is the unit. We've got authorization now and we're going to go in. But no debtor. Brian and Graham will break in and seize assets unless the manager can get him on the phone now. Just let them know we're here. Um, there must be someone we can get hold of. Yeah, because I don't want to go in unless I have to, yeah? Back in the office, it doesn't take long to get hold of the debtor. Hello, sir. There's a High Court writ uh, with your name on it outstanding for £5,256.18. pence. Yes, sir. I mean, can you not pay this, sir? Can you pay half of it today, sir? I need a minimum of 2500 today. OK, thank you, sir. Cheers, bye-bye, bye-bye. Progress, hopefully. There you go. Over two hours after they arrived at the storage facility, Brian and Graham finally meet the man they've been searching for. How are you doing? My name's Graham Aldred, High Court Enforcement. How are you? Well, uh, here. Yes, you're talking oh. to me? Yes, yes, yes. 2,000 on card, yeah? Two. Two on the card, yeah. The debtor pays nearly half the outstanding amount now and agrees to pay the rest in three weeks. If you don't pay it, we're going to have to come straight back in. in. We don't want to do that, my friend, yeah? Please don't. No, we don't want to. But if you don't do it, I will be back. Send someone slim. <laughs> Oh! That's, 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 that's original. <laughs> Almost everyone parts as friends. Guys, thank you so much, yeah? No problem, bro. We got off on the wrong foot, but we got there in the end. <laughs> yeah? And at last, the police can leave. Well done. Thank you so much. It's a week since Paul and his team evicted a family with six children from a house in Biggin Hill, Kent. Would you look at that? They can't be living like that, surely to God. Paul's come to return the keys to property owner Valley. She rented out her home to become a full-time carer for her mother, who has Alzheimer's. Hello. Hi. It's the first time Valley has seen the property since the family took it over. OK. Oh. Oh, God. Why would you rip things off the wall like that? This is my daughter's room. <laughs> I'll put that wallpaper up. It's all been ripped. That's damaged. They'd never paid me full rent. And then they stopped paying altogether in November. So I was 
painting houses, I was up ladders, I was window cleaning, I was coming up and down to London for jobs when all I wanted to do was a passive income to help my sister care for my mum. And, and they knew that. Yeah, but well, I'm afraid with people like that, there's no um, kindness, it's just seen as weakness. Well, I met them at a parenting group and she really? knew about my family and the difficulties we've had and uh, that are ongoing and she knew everything. Really? And, and still took advantage? We've had a really, really rough time. Oh, my God. What's that? It's just rice everywhere. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's that? <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Slag. Lovely. That's my kid's trampoline. We loved this house. We loved living here. And yeah. I just wanted to help my sister and my mum. And she's robbed me of time with my family. Yeah. And that's what really hurts. What's your next move? Well, just clear it, clean it. And then sell it, or...? No, I'm not now. No, OK. Because... I'm not going to be beaten by this experience. No, I understand. 